Hey everybody, my name is Max. I'm a freelance front-end developer <laughs> from Vienna. You can follow me on Twitter and GitHub at MXSTBR. Um, I'll talk about post-CSS today. Now, how many of you write CSS regularly? You know, maybe once a week, every day? Just raise your hand, just raise your hand. Okay, many, many people. How many of you use a, use a preprocessor, a CSS preprocessor? Quite many as well, that's nice, that's very good. So post-CSS's official tagline is PostCSS is a tool for transforming styles with JavaScript plugins. Now, PostCSS itself <laughs> consists of these four things. It's a CSS parser, a node tree API, a source map generator, and a node tree stringifier. Now, don't worry about all these words. Basically, it works this way. You've got your CSS file that you wrote. You pass that to PostCSS, which parses your CSS file and turns it into an abstract syntax tree, which looks something like this, you know? So you've got your sheet and your rule, and that has a declaration list, and that has a declaration, and those have you know, properties and values and everything. Now, the, the amazing thing is, PostCSS turns it into a JSON AST abstract syntax tree. So what you, what you can now do is you can take that syntax tree and do something with it. You can change something in it. And then when, you, when you've changed something in it, you, can, you pass it back to PostCSS, which has a stringifier, which turns that abstract syntax tree back into a CSS file and outputs that. Now, you might be thinking, you know, why, what can this do? Why, why would I use this over something like SAS or less? PostCSS can do amazing things because it's very modular and you, you write your plugins in JavaScript. You can do things like autoprefix, which is probably the most famous PostCSS plugin. It automatically, using their up-to-date browser usage statistics, adds prefixes to your CSS so you don't have to worry about them. These would be the actual prefixes you need to use right now to um, use this selector. And auto prefix just takes care of that for you automatically. It even removes old ones which you don't need to use anymore if you include them in your code. There's things like CSS Next, which lets you, which lets you use CSS for features right now. So you, you've got variables and you've got you know, eight digit hex numbers and everything, and it just turns that into now, now usable CSS3, which all browsers support. There's pre-CSS, which adds exactly the same features as SAS has. So you can just turn your existing SAS code into post-CSS code by just dropping post-CSS and pre-CSS in that. It just works. It just turns that back into CSS, which every browser supports. There's stuff like post-CSS style guide, which automatically generates style guides. And post-CSS colorblind, with, which changes your colors based on some colorblindness some people may have. So you can see what your site looks like if somebody, for example, doesn't see any green. Now, there's a lot of PostCSS plugins <laughs> out there. So I wrote postcss.parts, which you can go to and search through different PostCSS plugins. Now, to use PostCSS, it just integrates with your existing workflow. It doesn't matter if you use Grunt, Webpack, Meteor, Gulp, Broccoli, Brunch, Stylus, everything. It just supports all of those by just dropping in, by just requiring PostCSS and dropping it in. It's really easy to use and doesn't take a lot of effort. Now, since this is the Vienna JS meetup, I wanted to show you how to write the PostCSS plugin in JavaScript. So what our plugin is going to do is going to turn this, these selectors into these ones. So Vienna JS Awesome will be turned into Display Block, and Vienna JS Horrible will be turned into Display None. Before we get started, you know, short anatomy, you know, that's a selector and that's a declaration. I'm sure you all know that. And there's a, a declaration as a property and a value. Probably don't need to tell you that. This is just some boilerplate code. We require PostCSS to be able to use it. And then we export the PostCSS to plugin function, which takes a name and the function is a, a callback function. Now, you can have options, which is this OPTS that you get passed. So you can change things in your plugin based on what the, what the user actually wants, what the developer actually wants to do. We won't use any options, but you know, it's nice to have. This is the actual plugin. This is everything that needs to be done to replace the NHS Awesome with Display Block and the NHS Horrible with Display None. You get past the CSS AST tree as a JSON object in this function. And PostCSS supplies you with a really, really nice to use API. So you just go CSS.walk declaration, and it's like a for loop that goes over every declaration in the entire style sheet. And now you have access to each declaration. So we match that with Vienna JS. And then if the value of the declaration is awesome, we replace it with display block. And if it's horrible, we replace it with display none. Now, you might be thinking, 
Right, but this sounds kind of slow, right? I mean, if every plugin goes over every declaration all the time, you know, that, that's, that's quite a lot of time. But actually, PostCSS is as fast as libsass, which is the, the SAS parser written in C++. And PostCSS is entirely JavaScript. <laughs> so there's some very, very smart people working on this thing. And it's, it's available, you know, for all of your build tools, and you can use it right now. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, sure. Uh, it is usually easy to uh, apply a plugin or a tool or whatever it is uh, on an existing page. Uh, what happens when we inject uh, CSS later uh, while the user is working, requesting some new objects, and we need an additional CSS to be loaded? Since, How does it work? Since PostCSS is JavaScript anyway, you can just use it in browser. You, you just require the PostCSS function and transpile this, the, the CSS on the go, or you prepare it beforehand. You have a CSS file which you, which you transform with, with PostCSS and then just let the user load conditionally. Do you explicitly say that I need this uh, CSS to be modified, or it no. be transparent? Uh, it's, so you, you do that based on the build tool you use. It depends on if you use Grunt or Gulp or Webpack. For example, Webpack, I think, you, no, actually, yeah, no, it, it, it absolutely can split your CSS files. Doesn't doesn't take any, you know, there's no, yeah. Okay, thank you. Don't worry. Any other questions? Yeah, way back there. I want to know what are the exact advantages compared to SAS? The, one of the biggest advantages is the modularity. You can use the features you want to, but you don't have to use all of the features, which means it, it, get, it, it, it makes your preprocessor even faster. Because I, for example, never use mixins or extends. So if I, if I run a plug, uh, a C, my CSS through SAS, it's going to take a little bit more time because it has to check for mixins and for, for, for extends. And then also, since you can easily write your own plugin, you can add features to your CSS which you would like to use. And also, I mean, there's stuff, stuff is possible like post CSS style guide and auto prefixer, which SAS and less just can't do at the moment. And you um, prefer to like render this on the client compared to no no yourself? absolutely not absolutely not I, I I never do I always do it in my build tool I, okay so I use Webpack and I just you know require the CSS file and it automatically post CSS there's a post CSS loader for Webpack so that does that automatically runs it through all the plugins I use and then splits spits out the the new CSS file which is transformed okay thanks don't worry. Any other questions? Yeah. Maybe you can mention some more or weird plugins. Like, how many plugins are on this? All right, I'll show you. I'll show you. So, um, <laughs> there's a lot of them. This is the entire list of all the PostCSS plugins that are available right now. This is always up to date. There are some weird ones like German, German style sheets which lets you use German words in your CSS. <laughs> now, this is absolutely useless, right? It's absolutely useless, <laughs> but it's really funny, you know? You can do Hurry 300 pixels, and it automatically turns it into height. That's, for example, and there's like Australian style sheets, German style sheets, English style sheets, everything. Those are some of the very weird ones. Yeah, and then there's a lot of really useful ones which supply you with features which aren't available right now or let you use specific media queries. I mean, you can see there's a lot going on, like so many plugins. So I have a question. Um, basically, if, if everybody was using PostCSS, wouldn't we have like uh, a different code base to deal with every time we, we like land a new job? Like what? I'm just thinking about the poor front-end yeah. developers. That is absolutely true, and that is one of the big problems with post-CSS. Um, so I, I, I'm a freelance front-end developer, so I mostly work in, either on my own or in teams of five to six people, where when you agree to a plugin list, it, it, you, you're, you're absolutely fine. But as soon as you get to bigger teams and you maybe switch teams very often, you tend to have <laughs> some problem which pre-CSS fixes because not all the developers have to use all your plugins. If somebody doesn't use you know, variables, you just can't use them, and post-CSS takes care of that. So if you use pre-CSS, they can just write SAS code, and it's absolutely fine, which makes, a bit, which makes it a bit easier. And uh, what's your kind of preferred um, style of uh, writing, like maintaining a big CSS code base? Do you use like 
the fancy things in in SaaS and so on, or are you like no more bare bare bones? Type yeah, of thing? I'm pretty I'm pretty bare bones, which is why I like Post CSS because I just use auto prefix variables, and I sometimes depending on the project also lint my CSS. There's a great plugin called Do I Use, which basically um, it also uses Can I Use, so it always it always has the up to date browser statistics, but when you actually um, put, give post CSS your, 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 your code, it checks against your supported browser list and tells you if there's a feature that you want to use which isn't supported in a browser you want to support. So you c catch errors before they even happen. Stuff like this is really useful on bigger projects when you, when you really want to you know, be sure that it works on you know, IE6 or something. Any other question? All right, thank you very much. Thank you for watching this talk. Down below, you can find our channel, Vienna.js, where you can find a lot of different videos about front-end and back-end JavaScript. And feel free to subscribe.